And I'm here this morning with uh, Eric again. How are you, Eric? Good morning. Doing just fine, Dennis. Thank you. Anyway, we're on the east end of Prince Edward Island. And we're at the... Uh, uh, Town of uh, Yes. In the, uh, Western Rolo Bay. Rolo Bay PEI. I it almost is. said Rolo Bay, Ontario. I'm so <laughs> used to saying Ontario. I got to get used to being You're down away here. From home. I am. You are. Anyway, the other thing they grow here is they grow wheat and grain, cereals, and potatoes is their main crop. But the other one, which uh, is quite interesting, we'd like to show you is low bush or wild blueberries. The story of the wild blueberries. We had a little taste of that yesterday. Eric took us on a bit of a tour and we're trying to go back there again today. I couldn't believe the story and we'll get that when we get to the field because it is unbelievable. I, it just blew me away. And you, can, you, you can't believe the story of these blueberries, how it works. Anyway, that's where we are, Towns and Potatoes. Yep. In Rolo Bay, Prince Edward Island. That's it, that's where we are. And Very special spot, Dennis. We're going to head out to the field. We will. And I'll so. catch on to you, catch up to you later. Okay. So Eric and I are out in uh, Blueberry Field at Rolo Bay. And Eric's going to tell us a little bit about the blueberry crop. Yes, Dennis. Um, so we, have, we are at Townsend Potato Company and one of their blueberry fields. This is what we call the fruit year. So it's important to explain that there's a sprout year no no crop harvested and then the next year would be the fruit year that's when they harvest the berries so it is really an interesting crop it's a perennial crop once the field looks like this it's established now and um, and they'll manage it keeping down a number of the weeds and some of the diseases but this crop was a perennial crop and continue to bear fruit as i said every second year for as long as the uh, the growers manage this crop. Uh, we're very really fortunate today that they are picking and we'll see the harvester here in a minute, but absolutely beautiful, beautiful fruit. Uh, one, of, one of Canada's, I think, best kept secrets. Uh, this crop grown in the Maritimes, there's 100,000 acres. Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and PEI. There's some in Quebec, but there's 100,000 acres of low bush wild blueberries in the Maritimes. And uh, you really haven't lived till you had a chance to eat fresh wild blueberries. <laughs> They're yeah. good. Uh, incredibly high uh, in anthocyanins, which is good from a health perspective, uh, blood flow, um, heart health, uh, brain activity like this. And it's all scientifically proven. It's nature's super fruit. It truly, truly is. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, signature signature crop for the Maritimes. So how would these low bush wild blueberries differ from the high bush berries that we have in Ontario? Yes, good question, good question. <laughs> so the high bush are uh, a much taller, literally look like a bush. These are a bush too, but we call them low bush and you see that here. How do they differ? Um, the, low, the low bush is, you know, deemed as wild. It establishes on its own the the uh, often in the old days years ago there was a fire in this area you'd, you'd burn off all the trees it'd be a forest fire and one of the first things that come back is the wild blueberry so we're not allowed to do that anymore but they'll take the land old land they'll clear it and and um, it takes about six eight nine years to get it established so there's quite a long process there to get it into production in the process they take and keep some of the shrubby stuff down focusing on letting the the blueberry clones establish themselves and it is interesting you don't seed it down it just comes on its own that's what i don't understand like if we went in that field over there cleared those trees and kept the bushes down it would eventually become blueberries that's correct so if you take a close up on this berry See those tiny, tiny little brown seeds there? Oh, they're like pepper. They're like pepper. So they're um, seeds that have a high dormancy. So they lay there in the soil for a long, long time sleeping. And then certain climate or weather characteristics trigger them to germinate. So that's one way it, it, it develops itself. But the other is there's roots, rhizomes, it spreads 
like, slowly spreads or creeps and expands in the underground. Field. Yeah, that's right. So going back to your question on high bush, they don't creep, they don't spread. We plant those, we'll irrigate them, you know, manage them, and then they'll come along and pick. The high bush typically produces fruit every year. Much larger berries don't taste anywhere near as good. I'll get a little bit of black for that. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a it's a more managed, cultivated system, high bush. But the, as I said, the low bush is pretty cool. There's some fields in the Maritimes, 60, 70 plus years, they've been producing uh, fruit. So I got a question. Before they had the 7810 with the automatic picker, how did they pick these things? <laughs> you didn't ask me that before. That's a great question. So um, there are small little, they call them like grasshoppers, um, walk behind, they'll, they'll pick. Uh, so that was sort of the first step back for mechanization. There's not many people use those. There are a couple, but uh, most of them are using this, either a tractor mounted or even a self-propelled. But to answer your question, how were they harvested in years past, is called a hand rake. And it looked like a comb with a little sort of metal basket on the back. And you literally, for those that ever saw a saw or a sickle for wheat and grain, it was a similar concept. You rake this hand rake through the berries. And, th and this, if you want to watch, this is what would happen. You rake it through like this, and the berries would come off and they would, then have the harvested fruit nowhere near the capacity to harvest. Thousands of young kids paid for school or got spending picking money berries. picking berries, yes. What I can't believe, this machine was made in a shop somewhere. On PEI, Allen Farm Equipment, yes it was. And, and if you look real careful, these were picked yesterday. That's right, there's That's right. virtually no berries left. And the, this is what he's coming to pick now, and it's just solid blueberries. And you can see the height, like that's yeah, that's uh, maybe 25 centimeters, 20 centimeters at the most, you know, eight inches type thing. And uh, they're clean, they're cleaning that fruit right down through and picking, as Dennis saying, 90 percent plus of the fruit. So We're gonna here, get a shot of this he, machine when here he, he comes, comes by yeah. here. It's unbelievable. And he's only picking, he was telling us, I think 28 inches. Yes, 28, 30 inches and a you know, grand speed here of a couple miles an hour. So it's a slow, slow process. They go up through the head here, they get raked off. There's that conveyor just off to the left beside the, right beside the tractor. They go up, there's a bit of air on them. And then they go back into those yellow boxes behind the cab. And they can only stack them so high. The fruit is still very delicate. If you stack too high and too thick and then truck them off, you'll just get a bunch of blueberry juice. So I think uh, what we'll probably end up doing is we'll step off to the left side here as he comes by and let him pass by. And we should uh, get off this way. You want to get off this way and yeah, watch? I want to see that head picking those okay. berries. Well, we don't have to walk very far. No, we've got to walk 28 inches over. <laughs> yeah. And they've got this mounted on a 7810. Probably one of John Deere's better tractors. And Becky was saying over 10,000 hours. They bought this tractor brand new. bit more cleaning going on but there's some good I'll tell you. He's cleaning those primarily with air. 
That's right, a little bit of air, a little bit like a combine, right? Yep, yep. All run with an electric generator on the back. It's got a PTO generator, all the motors are electric. And the, we saw a potato harvester, they're similar with a okay. generator and all electric motors. Most of the tractors now, the load on them is just so high that uh, hydraulic, electric over hydraulic is getting to be quite popular. This machine is heavy. That head that it's only uh, 36 inches wide, but it is heavy. So yes, as I mentioned, 100,000 acres in the Maritimes, they'll harvest half that roughly each year. And uh, here on the island, we've got uh, PI Wild Blueberry producers. You can uh, look on their site. You can buy blueberries in a number of the stores. A lot of the producers themselves will sell well, mostly frozen, but fresh and frozen direct. So if you've never tried wild blueberry and you're making a trip to the island, uh, come mid-August to late August and you'll get one of the, um, the, the treats I'm sure that you've never had an opportunity to enjoy. I had a blueberry scone for breakfast this morning. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, blueberry pie, blueberry mm. muffins, you name it. You can take and put wild blueberries into a lot, a lot of really you know, nice food products. So... Come and visit PI, Canada's Food Island is what it's called. Another thing I wanted to talk about was, uh, let's say, so we picked these blueberries this year. Can, can we plant potatoes here next year? Oh, no. No, no. As I mentioned before, it's a perennial crop, and they work uh, quite hard and a long time to get it established. Once it's established, typically they'll never give up on it in that sense. They can pull back a little on management, if prices drop, they'll they'll pull the management back a bit. But say the price is back up two years later, they can come back in and start working this blueberry stand again and bring it right back to life. But um, no, blueberries and cultivated land don't mix. Wild blueberries and cultivated. Now that's different for high bush, right? So if if he cultivated this land, that would be the end of the blueberries. That's correct. They would be never out, come back. Out and gone. There's something really strange that cultivated ground, once we put in commercial crop, you said potatoes, corn, soybeans, so on. Something in the ground, whether it's the you know, the biological activity and micro microorganisms, the blueberries just don't do they don't do well at all they in won't cultivated back. ground. You need quote wild environment. Virgin land. Pretty much. That's correct, Dennis. Yeah. Well, thanks, Eric. I have learned a lot about blueberries today. No, we are so glad to have you visit the <laughs> island. And as I said, this is sort of one of the best kept secrets. I love them. And uh, nothing like fresh, low bush, wild blueberries. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the tour. Anyway, that's about going to do it for this video. I've had a real interesting time. Learned a lot here on the island. And if you've liked this video... If you like this video, give us a like, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. I've been out for you, wear a man. I've been out for you, wear a man. Across the desert, spare man. I breathe the mountains, air man. I travel, I've done my share, man. I've been out for you, wear a man.